All right, so in this video, we're going to change gears a little bit and start studying how to compute volumes using calculus. So say, for example, we wanted to compute the volume of the following three-dimensional solid. Up until now, we've computed areas under curves, but we can kind of take that process and extend it to find volumes of solids. So what's the process? Well, we intersect the solid with a plane and we obtain a small cross-sectional region. So a slice of the solid, basically. Imagine like a bread slicer. And we can approximate the volume by taking the surface area of that slice, A of X, and multiply by the thickness of the slice. So I'm gonna zoom in right now. A of X is the area of that slice, so that would be a two-dimensional quantity. And then the thickness of the slice would give us our third dimension, okay? And as you can imagine, the more slices you take, the better approximation you have for the volume of the solid. So that's why we say that the volume of the solid is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity, as you take infinitely many cross-sectional slices of the area of x sub i, so that's the i sub-interval where you're taking a cross-section, times delta x, that's the thickness of the slice. And we've seen this expression before when we were looking at the limit of our Riemann sum, and so we can write this as the integral, the definite integral from a to b, as long as the solid is bounded from between a and b of a of x dx. Okay, so if you're integrating an area, then the result is going to be a volume. Basically, the dimension will always increase by one because a of x is two dimensional quantity and then dx basically adds that third dimension. Okay, so in this section, we're gonna look at a very special kind of solid, a solid of revolution. Well, what is that? It's obtained by taking a region and revolving or spinning it around a line. So this is a very specific kind of solid that we're going to focus on for the time being. And the process that we're going to look at in this section will involve either using disks or washers. So I'll explain what that is. So when you take some region and you revolve it, let's just say around the x-axis, a disk is when the cross-sectional slices are solid throughout. That's why they're called a disk. So if you look at one slice here, okay, we can see that there's no holes or gaps in it. This is some arbitrary slice. The thickness is delta x, which is dx in the integral. And then the area is gonna be, well, it's a circle, right? Since I'm revolving around the x-axis. And we know the area of a circle is pi r squared. So that's where we come up with the volume formula here for a disk. I have the integral from A to B, assuming that the volume or the solid is bounded between A and B, whatever they may be, times pi r squared, since that's the area of some arbitrary slice dx. Now r needs to be in terms of x, so we'll, come, we'll look at different examples how exactly to do that. Now a washer occurs when the region that you're revolving creates a hole in the middle. So when each cross-sectional slice looks like a washer or a donut. Donuts are more fun. So if you were to look at a slice here, okay, you're gonna have a circle on the outside and then a hole in the middle. So you have two radii. This is what the area of one slice would look like. Well, how would you compute this? Well, you have this outer radius from here to here. This we'll call capital R. Some books just say R with subscript out. And then you have an inner radius and you would need to subtract that out, yes? Because that's the hole that's not a part of your solid. That's little r. So the purple shaded area would be the outer circle minus the inner circle, which was, is why you have pi times capital R squared minus pi times lowercase r squared. Again, integrating from A to B dx. Now for disks and washers, we slice perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Meaning for both these examples, these integrals were set up with respect to x, right, dx. All those slices were taken in the x direction. And that's because we're spinning around the x-axis. So perpendicular to the x-axis is slices in the x direction. If we were spinning around the y-axis and we were using the disk or washer method, we would integrate with respect to y. And we're going to consider examples doing both, um, both directions, okay? All right, so here we go. Let's look at an example 
find the volume, sketch the region, the solid, and a typical disc or washer. That's kind of like how we used to um, sketch a typical rectangle, same idea. So here the first one is y equals the natural log of x. It's bounded by the horizontal lines, y equals one, y equals two, the vertical line x equals zero, aka the y-axis, and we're rotating this about the y-axis, okay? So before I begin, I wanna know how to scale things out on the x-axis. I know in the y-axis, I'm really focusing just on the area one and two, but how far do we need to go on the x-axis? Well, if it's bounded by one and two, let's see. If y equals one, that means the natural log of x would be equal to one. So in that case, x would be e, which is about 2.7. And then if y is equal to 2, that means natural log of x equals 2, so x equals e squared, which is about 7.4. So my x-axis, I'm going to scale it out up to, let's say, 8. And then since I'm spinning around the y-axis, I'm going to go down to negative 8 as well. All right, so here's the y-axis. And the x-axis, I'll put it here, maybe a little bit more. Okay, so we're gonna go out to eight. Actually, I need more. Much better, oh yes. Okay, here's the x-axis, y-axis. Now, let's go out to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and negative eight. One, two, three, four, five six, seven, eight. Okay, and then why I'm only interested in focusing between one and two mostly, so I'll spread that part out nicely. So let's say this is one, this is two, three. Okay, so we have y equals natural log of x bounded by y equals one. If y is one, x is 2.7. So right here, and then if y is two, X is about 7.4, so right around here. So I'm only interested in this portion of the graph of ln of x, and then I'm also bounding it by x equals zero. So here's y equals one, here's y equals two, and then x equals zero is the y-axis that's bounding it. So can you see what the region is that we're gonna spin? This is the region. It has to be some bounded region. So they have to give you enough curves that it creates this closed region. And I'm gonna be spinning or revolving this around the y-axis, okay? So now let's see, what would it look like if we spun this region around the y-axis? You basically can sort of reflect it over the y-axis. I'm gonna draw the part that results from revolving it just in gray so that you know it's not part of the original region, okay? So here on the other side, if we revolved it, okay. And then this part would be rounded at the top. And then we're gonna draw a typical disc or washer. Well, it's gonna be a disc, it's solid. Let's make this darker, it looks so sad. Okay, so a typical disc, remember we're gonna take slices perpendicular to the axis of revolution. So we're spinning around the y-axis perpendicular to that. We would have a slice that looks like this. Is it solid or is there a hole in it? Is it a disc or a washer? It's a disc, right? There's no gaps in it. I'm gonna color it in nice and solid. Okay, so this is a typical disc. All right, well, I need to identify what the radius is. Let's see here. Well, before I do that, I wanna decide if am I gonna be integrating with respect to x or y. So here's the thought process. Since these disks are stacking, will you tell me which way are they stacking? Vertically or horizontally? If I'm slicing perpendicular to the y-axis, they're gonna be stacking vertically. So these disks are stacking up in the vertical direction. Then that means we need to integrate with 
with respect to y. So what does that mean? We need everything in terms of y. We need to solve the function in terms of y. So y equals natural log of x. I'm going to solve it for x, and x would equal e to the y. So what does that mean? My radius here is equal to e to the y. Okay. So now I can put it all together. We have the following. The volume is going to be the definite integral. Now these limits of integration have to also match. They have to be in terms of y. So I'm going to be integrating from y equals 1 up until y equals 2. 1 to 2. And then you're going to have pi times the radius, which is e to the y squared dy. So everything's matchy-matchy. Limits are y, functions in terms of y, and you need a dy. Okay, now let's anti-differentiate. So we have integral 1 to 2 pi times e to the 2y dy. And then if I anti-differentiate e to the 2y, you can do a u sub, or hopefully you've noticed by now, you can just divide by 2, right? So I'm going to have pi divided by 2 times e to the 2y evaluated from 1 to 2. And then that's going to give me pi over 2 times e to the fourth power, 2 times 2, minus e squared. And this is our exact answer. This is the volume of that solid. So technically, this is a three-dimensional quantity. You would have your units cubed on this. All right. Nice start. Now let's move on to another example. Find the volume generated by rotating R1, this is R1, about the y-axis. And this curve is y equals x cubed, okay? So we're rotating it around the x-axis this way. So what would it look like? Well, you can sort of just reflect it. And then maybe add on a little bit, right? This would be curved over here, here and here. Here's the end of it. And if I take a slice perpendicular to the axis of rotation, I'm going to be slicing in the x direction, right? So here's one typical slice. Is it a disc or a washer? It's a disc, right? You know what this thing looks like? Have you ever played that board game, Sorry? It looks like one of those game pieces, right, on its side. Okay, so if we're going to be taking slices in the x direction, I need to integrate everything with respect to x. So I need to express the radius in terms of x also. Well, that's fine because they already gave me the function. It was x cubed. So here's the radius, r equals x cubed. Okay. So here we go. The volume is going to be the integral. What are the limits of integration from 0 to 1 of pi r squared? So x cubed squared dx. Okay. A lot of the times I like to just take the pi outside the integral so I can focus on all the other action. So I'm going to have x to the 6th dx. So that's going to be pi times 1 7th, x to the 7th evaluated from 0 to 1 which is just gonna be one minus zero. So I have pi over seven for our answer. Okay, not too bad, right? Now, what if I take the same region and I change the axis that I'm revolving it around? So example three, now find the volume generated by rotating, this is still R1 with y equals x cubed about the y-axis. So now we are spinning this way, okay? Well, in order to draw what the solid would look like or to sketch it out, I'm gonna make a separate graph over here because I need to go into the negative y direction, right? 
So here we have x-axis, y-axis. This is one, this is negative one, this is also one. Okay. So here's the region, the original region. And then we spin it around the y-axis. So what does it end up looking like? Kind of like a bowl, right? But a weird bowl. It's hollow inside. This is the part that comes from revolving it. Okay, and then now we're going to take a slice perpendicular to the axis of revolution. So I'm going to take a slice this way. And notice now, this is the first example we've looked at where we have a washer, right? So we have an inner radius and an outer radius. And it colored in very thoroughly. It's therapeutic and it looks good. All right, here we go. Now, what is that outer radius? Let's see. The outer radius is going to start from the center and go all the way to the edge of the graph. Is the outer radius changing? Now, look at it. If I took a slice somewhere else, would it be different? No, the outer radius is always equal to one in this case. Now, what about the inner radius? The inner radius, let's zoom. The inner radius would start at the same place and then it would only go up to here. Or if I took a slice somewhere else, maybe it would go from here to here, right? So the inner radius is changing and it's changing based on whatever the curve is. So the inner radius is changing. However, which way are we gonna be integrating with respect to what variable? Well, remember, if I'm revolving around the y-axis, I have to take slices perpendicular, and those slices are going to stack vertically. So that means we need to integrate with respect to y. So I need to first solve y equals x cubed for x, which would give me x equals y to the one-third. And then now I can say, aha, my inner radius is y to the one third. All right, so now we can put everything together in our integral. So I have the volume equals the integral. Now the limits are gonna be with respect to y based on the original region that we are revolving. So the limits are gonna go from zero to one. And then remember we have pi times the outer radius squared minus pi times the inner radius squared dy. Now you don't need to put the pi next to each of those ever again. Just pull the pi outside. It makes life easier. And then you have integral from 0 to 1. This is going to be 1 minus y to the 2 thirds dy. And then anti-differentiating from here we have 0 times, and not zero, just pi, times antiderivative of one is y, minus, this is gonna be three-fifths, y to the five-thirds, evaluated from zero to one. So then this is pi times one minus three-fifths minus zero. So I have one minus three-fifths, that's two-fifths times pi, so two-fifths pi. All right, very nice. Let's take it to the next level now. Let's spin around something other than the x or y axis. Weren't you wondering, are these the only axes we're gonna spin around? So here we go. Example four, we're taking the region bounded by y equals x cubed, y equals one, and x equals two, and I'm spinning it around y equals negative three. Okay, so let's see here. What is this graph going to look like? So y equals x cubed. I know what that looks like. I'm only interested in the portion bounded by y equals 1 and x equals 2 and x cubed. Okay. 
So here's the x-axis, here's the y-axis. So I won't go too far in the x direction. One, two, sound good? But if x is two, x cubed is gonna be eight. So I gotta go at least that high. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight's down there somewhere. Okay, so let's see, y equals x cubed, and I'm also bounding it with y equals one, so that would be at one, one. And then when x is two, y is eight, so we're bounding it here with x equals two, and then here's y equals x cubed, and then I'm also bounding it with y equals one. Okay, so this is the region that's gonna get spun. Okay, now notice in this case, we're spinning it around the line y equals negative three. So I'm going to color this in and then show you what that's gonna look like. So y equals negative three, where's that one, two, three right here. y equals negative three, we're spinning around this. Okay, so there's gonna be a gap in the middle, right? How big is the gap? Well, look, this is one unit above from that, so this is four units. So I'm gonna go down another four units before I reflect what I have. So one, two, three, four. I'll do it in gray, because this is not part of the original region, right? This is just a result from revolving. So one, two, three, four, here. Just mirror it, just mirror it about that axis, okay? It's gonna be something like this, like this, right? And then we have to decide which way are we gonna be slicing to. So if we're spinning around y equals negative three, slices perpendicular to that axis are gonna be stacking in the x direction, right? So you're gonna have a piece here like this and over here, and let me take an arbitrary slice. So we've definitely got a washer, right? Okay, now we have to determine what the inner radius and what the outer radius are. Okay, so let's first focus on the outer radius. therapeutic to color so really take your time with this part okay so outer radius let's see here that's going to be from the center to the end of the solid so how much is that well you cannot say x cubed because x cubed is only the distance from the x-axis up until the graph right that would be if it's just x cubed but we have an extra three units tacked on there, okay? Now, you can kind of think back to when we found area between curves and you did top curve minus bottom curve. So you could think of the same thing to find the outer radius. The outer radius is gonna be that top function bounding the outer radius is slice, which would be x cubed, minus negative three, since y equals negative three is bounding the inner radius from below. Or you can just look at it and say, oh, that's x cubed plus an additional three units, okay? Now, what about the inner radius? Now, this one's interesting because the inner radius actually doesn't change, right? No matter where you take your slice, that's the inner radius. And it's always equal to, can you tell? A cylinder of radius four is basically being drilled out of this solid. So if you wanna think of it in terms of how we computed the outer radius, you would take what's bounding the inner radius above, well, y equals one, minus, we're spinning around negative three, that's bounding it below, which is four. Or you can just look and say, oh yeah, that gap is size four, that inner radius is a solid cylinder, it's not changing. No matter what the slice is, the inner radius is always four. And if you don't believe it, just draw another, another washer and make sure you get the same thing, right? But you could see the inner radius is gonna be the same. Okay, I'm gonna erase it because that's looking messy. Okay, cool. 
And since we're spinning around y equals negative three, then we know we're integrating with respect to x. Okay, so let's set up our volume in the x direction. So the limits have to be in terms of x. So it's gonna be from one to two. You can pull the pi outside and you're gonna have outer radius squared minus inner radius squared dx. Okay, so this is gonna give me, let's pull the pi outside, get them out of the way, integral one to two. This is gonna be x to the sixth plus six x cubed plus nine minus 16 dx. So this is pi times the integral from one to two, x to the sixth plus six x cubed minus seven dx, which is gonna be pi times one seventh x to the seventh plus six over four, so three over two x to the fourth minus seven x from one to two. And then now I'm gonna evaluate at the limits of integration. So I have pi outside, two to the seventh, that's 128 over seven plus two to the fourth, that's 16 times three is 48 divided by 224 minus 14 minus, if I plug in one, now I get one seventh plus three halves minus seven. Okay, and then this is 471 pi over 14. Units cubed. Oh, how cute. I'll take it. Okay, how are we doing? One last one. Hang in there. You'll be excited when you see the directions. Look, set up only so you don't have to evaluate it an integral for the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region bounded by y equals zero, aka the x-axis, y equals sine x. They're already telling us x is between zero and pi, and we're spinning it around y equals negative two. So kind of similar to the last one. We're spinning around a horizontal line. Um, okay, so if I'm spinning around y equals negative two, I know there's going to be like a hole in the middle of this, or a cylinder drilled out most likely. Oh. So I'm gonna put a lot of my graph in the negative y direction. Oh, you know what? It doesn't wanna draw over there. Good, okay, so here's the y-axis. And then I'm only gonna go up to a little past one, right? Cause it's sine x, it's not gonna go up very high. Here's the x-axis. We're only interested in the area from zero to pi. So here's one, and then we're spinning around y equals negative two. Spinning around this. Okay. So perpendicular to y equals negative two, the slices are gonna be stacked in the x direction. So I'm gonna integrate with respect to x. Okay. So now let's graph sine x, so it's at zero, zero, pi over two, one, pi zero. We're also bounded below by the x-axis. So what are we spinning? We're just spinning this region here. Okay, and I'm spinning it around y equals negative two. So look, I have this gap of two units, so I'm gonna mirror it on the other side. Okay, so this is the result from revolving. And then I'll go down to negative five there. And let's change this up so it's gray as well. Since this was not part of the original region, right? So this is just the result from revolving. Okay, so what would our solid look like? Well, you could kind of close up the ends of it, right? So there's that cylinder missing in the middle. Okay, so let's take a slice perpendicular to the axis of revolution. So I'm gonna draw a slice here. And we can see we have a washer, so I'm gonna have an outer radius and an inner radius. 
And now let's see if we can figure out how to express that outer radius in terms of x. Okay. The coloring time is the time to regroup, you know. Go, all right, I'm going to plan my strategy, have a nice picture. That way I can do a good job. All right, outer radius. Let's see here. So it's going to start from the center, go all the way to the outside of the solid. That's the outer radius. So it's equal to top function sine of x minus what bounds it below, negative 2. So outer radius is sine of x plus 2. What about the inner radius? What am I subtracting out? This is the inner radius, right? Is it changing? Take another slice somewhere if you want. The inner radius is just equal to 2. Or you could say it's the top function, which is y equals 0, minus negative 2, so r equals 2. Or you could just look, right? Oh, I have a cylinder of radius 2 being drilled out from it. Okay, awesome. Now we just have to set this one up. So our limits of integration are going to be in terms of x. They're right here given to me, 0 to pi. So volume is going to be the integral from 0 to pi. I have pi times outer radius sine of x plus 2 squared minus inner radius which is 2 squared dx now the problem did say set up only so technically we've set it up so depending on your instructor they may or may not say you're done but the reason why they said set up only is because later on you're going to learn how to actually compute this integral so if you were to you'd want to take it a little bit further so let's just do that now so we could take the pi outside we have integral 0 to pi if I multiply out sine of x plus 2, that quantity, and I square it, I'll have sine squared x plus 4 sine x plus 4, and then minus 2 squared, which is 4. And then those 4s can cancel. So the volume is pi times the integral from 0 to pi sine squared x, which you'll learn how to integrate later, plus 4 sine x, that one you know, dx. Okay, so just check with your instructor how far they want you to take it. And that concludes the lesson on computing volumes using the disks or washer method.